everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Um, I feel like I say the same thing every single time. Um, so welcome back to my channel and today I have my March favorites. So these are all the things I've been loving or hating um, in the month of March and I don't think I have anything that I've been hating this month. So first I just want to say I have a um, Ninja Coffee bar because the commercials just spoke to me on a spiritual level while I was at work one day and I just thought, you know what? I'm gonna treat myself. It has a like frother on it. So just, that is all foam. That is so incredible. I am ecstatic. I haven't used the frother for a, like, a good couple of months, not since before when I lived at TJ's parents' house and I'm impressed. All I did was heat up some milk and just froth it while my coffee was going. I love it. Mm. Coffee has like just something about it when there's like a nice layer of foam on top. I don't know. And then before we really get started, and this is a five five minute intro, I just want to give a little shout out to what's on my lips. I have had this ColourPop lippy stick for years. I feel like and it's TGIF it's a matte lippy and it's it looks like it would be like a seriously like brick red but it just it matches my shirt quite nicely actually I don't know I'm I'm digging it it is really comfortable my lips are dry but they don't look gross and I just I like the color I don't it took me so long to try this I freaking love this color it's spring but I'm rocking a red lip and it's not a spring red it's a fall red, but whatever. First things first. I freaking love these shoes. I recently just had to like wash or like wipe down the tops because I wore these on St. Patrick's Day. Um, and I was traipsing around Newport in these and they were so comfortable. And my feet were not cold in the least. I love these. I think they're so amazing. They're um, G by Guess. And I got them at DSW. They probably might still sell them. I don't know. I, um... I found them online and then I was just obsessed with them they went on sale so I bought them. And they've got laces in the front oh. um, and they do come untied so I just tie them up and then they have a, a zip on the side and they've got this really cute little, like, little buckle on the side. I adore these. I've been wearing them non-stop but specifically in St. Patrick's Day I wore these and they're amazing and I wore them on Easter which isn't technically uh, March. It was April 1st, but I think they, they just go with everything. And every time I'm like, TJ, do these shoes go with my outfit? And he's like, those shoes go with everything. And I was like, okay. I believe you. Um, next, I got these off of ASOS, actually. I love ASOS. Um, but I bought these sunglasses because I thought they looked cool. They're huge. And they've got this, like, wire rim around the edge that's kind of, like, detached. And... I just love these. I think they're really cool. Um, I'm pretty sure they're not polarized in the least. So they're definitely not like sun safe, but they look nice. Um, they do get smudged really easily. And sometimes you can see like on the side of, of the um, lens, you can see like a reflection from what's behind you. But I just like how they look. I think they're really cool. I also have this candle. This is not an empties video, but I've been burning this for the, actually the past couple of months and I recently I just I've given up on it because it's not burning correctly um, anymore because it's so I've never used up a candle in my life like this is insane um, this is Autumn in the Park by Yankee Candle and like it's all like black on the top because of it would just start burning black after a while and I think it's probably because the wick was too long but it still smells good but there's something there's something about it that smells like burnt so I think I'm just going to throw this out. I have plenty of this scented candle elsewhere in my house so I'm I'm not gonna miss it because I have like 15 backups. Every fall I buy this candle because it smells like in the fall after it rains that's what it smells like. It's amazing. I can't fathom how they got that scent into a candle but they did and I love it and I will gladly pay $25 for a candle in this scent. And I've actually tried, um, 
I've smelled leaves from uh, Bath and Body Works, and it's just not the same. Not the same at all. Um, okay, so I've recently rediscovered this in my collection. It's Yes to Coconuts Hydrate and Restore Ultra Light Spray Body Lotion. I like this. It's got like this cool like nozzle where you just like trigger it, but then it also has this like little plastic stopper underneath the neck. Um, you move it to one side and it's unlocked, and then you move it to the front and it's locked, so you can't use it. But it, and you do have to unplug the no the nozzle every now and again. But I like it because you can just spray it. It's super lightweight. It absorbs really quickly. Um, so I like to use this um, after my showers because it's just it's so easy and so quick to use and it smells so good. Um, next thing I have, I recently had like a shit ton of breakouts. Um, and I realized I had this in my collection, which is Formula 10.0.6. Pores Be Pure Skin Clarifying Mud Mask with Strawberry and Yarrow. Um, and it says, the skin refining mask with berry boosters goes straight to work on clogged pores. Strawberry and rosemary eliminate impurities while yarrow clarifies skin for instant complexion perfection. I love this. I recently had like a million and a half breakouts. Um, so I took this and it's like, it's a clay. Well, mud mask. Um, and it'll dry down. But it smells so good and I just used this on um, all the spots of my face that had breakouts and I waited like almost 30 minutes for all of it to dry and then I just had took um like a washcloth and like soaked it in like hot warm water and just like gently like removed it all. I swear to god this is like a miracle product. I also have Lash Paradise. Um, L'Oreal's uh, mascara that came out like months and months and months and months and months ago. I have mine in blackest black and I really like it. I really didn't think I would. The wand is like crazy huge. I did not think I was going to like it. I thought it was going to be a clumpy horrible mess. I love this mascara. I'll probably buy it again. Let's be honest. Because I actually like, I just really like how it holds a curl and it just looks really nice. Another thing that I have is by e.l.f. My, I don't even know if they sell this like normally or by itself. It's a liquid lipstick um, remover. And I think it's funny they have to put a sticker that says clear. I'm like, okay. It came in like a little Christmas set that my friend Nicole got me for Christmas. And it came with a lipstick, like just a plain lipstick. Um, a lip liner and then this and I like this a lot it's it's very like oily um, but I'll just take like a q-tip and I'll rub it all over my lips and then I'll use like something else to wipe it off but I think it does a really good job without me having to like rip and tear at my lip at my lips all the time to get my lip color off so I really really like this I think it'll last a decent amount of time, but if I can find this online and buy some more, I totally will. There's, it, it, it means it's elf. It's got to be like super cheap. On the flip side, I could probably just use coconut oil, and this tastes really sweet. If you don't like artificially sweetened lip products, you, you're gonna hate this. It tastes like horrible, but you're not meant to eat it. But it, it's on your lips. You're gonna get it in your mouth. Oh, I am just reminded by my giant um, nail polish bag. I have a nail polish favorite. And it's actually shocked me because, I'm gonna be 100% honest, I'm not a huge fan of this brand. Um, I love Kathleen Lights. Love her videos. I went out and I splurged on, I went out, I went online and I splurged on four of her nail polishes. I have Gumption because hell yeah I love that movie. Miss Honey because hell yeah I love that movie. Um, Brick Sidewalk and Zoe. And if you're not aware, Gumption is from um, The Holiday and Miss Honey is from Matilda. Love those movies. Um, so I bought these because I thought that Zoe was just up my street. I, I thought Brick House was going to be more red. Um, I love the color blue. Gumption is like perfect color and Miss Honey is a little too peachy um, for my initial liking but I actually really do like how it looks on my nails it looks very natural um, I'm not a fan of this formula 
I love how it looks. I like the branding. I like the bottle. I like, I like the, the black top. It's very nars -y feeling. It just chips so crazily on me. Like, it's it's obnoxious. Like, I think I wore, I wore Zoe um, the past couple of, like, the past week. And I only put one coat because I was feeling lazy. And I kind of liked how it looked. Uh, that day... Like, it chipped. Like, it just peeled. And I've never experienced that with an nail polish in my life. But, on the flip side, I feel like I had a good experience this month overall with these nail polishes, as weird as that sounds. So, I, I have, like, a love-hate relationship with this brand. I like it this month. It's not a flop. It's a favorite. I just, the, sometimes the, um, the formula is a little peely on my nails. And I don't have a very strenuous kind of job where I'm not like whacking my hands against things all the time but it chips like crazy around the edges and it flakes on the sides it's the strangest thing but I really liked it this month so I guess if you're feeling the need to spend 850 on a nail polish and shipping um you could go ahead and and do that I think this one they have happy hour on Monday or something like that where things are on sale. I have no idea. Um, I only bought it the one time and I think maybe in the summer I'll buy some more because they've got like a lot more colors. I like the color selection. Formula is just okay. So I'm, I'm giving it a fair shot. I'm trying to try it again. Book time. I went crazy on the books this month. I cannot believe how many of these I read. I talked about this one in my books I'm getting rid of video because I had fin just recently finished it and I knew off the bat I was getting rid of it. It is The Captain's Bride by Lisa Ton Bergen. I liked this book but like I said in that video not enough to keep it, not enough to want to get the other ones in the series and it just didn't hook me enough for me to keep it. It's about a woman, Elsa. She married a ship captain. They're from a town in Norway. Um, come over to the United States and they're trying to make a, a name for themselves. It all works out for them somehow. I wouldn't call it a page turner. I would say I forced myself to read this entire book. So I'm getting rid of it. This one, I don't know if I'm going to keep or not. It's the, it's A Secret History of Empire and War, The Imperial Cruise um, by James Bradley. I like his writing style. He seems very sarcastic. This is, um, all during the, what, the Pacific War? Yeah, and it and it tries to distinguish what was the catalyst of that war. Like, was it America being dicks? Probably. Let's be honest. And it was really interesting. I might keep it. I kind of almost want to try his other books. Um, it says it's a national bestseller. I liked it. It wasn't, like, torture to read. So, huh, there's that. Maybe I'll keep it. See, this one is the last book I read in March. It's called Last Christmas, and it's the private prequel. By Katie Bryan. I never read The Private. I'm getting rid of this book. Hands down. I read this in one day. It was, cause, I mean it's, it's pretty short, but this girl um, apparently is not so crazy insane and you don't realize that until like a little more than halfway through the book when she just snaps. And she seems like just like a conflicted anxiety ridden girl. Suddenly she's this clingy, crazy, obsessed murdering crazy woman and I was just like what and then one thing that really bugged me about this book is the perception of time is totally off but in one of the chapters they wake up they had breakfast and they're waiting for some of the other kids to go to breakfast so that they can sneak into this one's kid one kid's um, room and prove that he's been stalking them and it's breakfast time mind you breakfast time they, the author said it was 5 a.m. Um, so they sneak in. The kid, Sergei, finds them, runs away. They chase after him. Uh, and then it says, an hour later, it was dark, and I'm waiting for my um, taxi. I'm like, an hour later, it's pitch blackout, and you're leaving for the night? It was 5 a.m. an hour ago. <laughs> like, what? Um, no, I don't like this book. I'm getting rid of it. Anyway, uh, these two books. They are in the same series. I read them both. I don't know how it happened. They were not next to each other on the shelf. 
they have the same author's name, and this one was between them. This is B-R-A, these are B-R-E. It shouldn't have been between them. Um, but so anyway, I read The Purple Emperor uh, first, which is the third book in the series, and I read The Fairy Wars two books after, which is the first. And so I really like this book, actually. I'm keeping them both. I think they're great. Um, it's all about this boy, Henry. He's from uh, our world, and he meets um, a fairy named Purgus, and he goes to his world. Um, two pages into this book, I was like, gosh, these names are familiar. What are the odds that there's a Henry and a Mr. Fogarty in two different books? And then I was like, I'm such an idiot. I even saw on the inside, like, one of the inside pages. Where is it? Also by Herbie Brennan. Fairy Wars. What the F? But these are by Herbie Brennan. Um, they're really good. I like this one a lot more than I like this one. Obviously, this is the first one that he wrote. Um, and this one was just a better storyline. It was quicker reading. Uh, this one was, uh, just okay. I kind of knew what was going to happen because I got all the information from this one. This could have been a standalone book if it wanted to be. Um, I really like them. I'm keeping them. This is A Great and Terrible Beauty by Libba Bray. Uh, it's a New York Times bestseller. I grabbed it because I, re I recognized the title. Um, this is not at all what I thought it would be. Um, it was good. I liked it. Will I keep it? I don't know. Um, because I don't think I'd read it again. It's this girl that she lives in India with her parents, her mom dies, and she gets sent to boarding school in London. And this is the time of like corsets and petticoats. And apparently she's magical. She, uh, apparently, she foresee her mom, she foresaw her mom's death, um, and she can go into this other realm where she can take magic from the realm and bring it to the regular world and it's all magic of like perception and imagination you wish something it is there um and she's got like a bunch of friends and she brings them with them and then you know history kind of replays itself and they end up going crazy with power but i liked it i don't know if i'd read it again it's that's my problem i like books to have a reread value um, I think I'm going to pass it on. I have to decide on that one. But it's good. This one I'm totes keeping. This is The Queen's Lover by Vanora Bennett. Yeah, I read this one this month. Didn't I? I was either reading it last month into this month or the whole last month. But I love this book. Um, this is all about... Catherine of Valois, and she kind of, the, the author kind of like grabs her storyline and, and places it in the timeline of her life, like where she thinks it would have happened, if that makes sense, um, like right between, like her husband dies in the beginning and then at the end she gets up, she gets with the Tudor boy, um, so, boy, they're like sort of adults by that point, um, but I really like this book, um, I think it's it's just really good and it it actually like tugged at my heartstrings so badly i cried while i was reading this book because the king and queen her parents of france are so sad oh my god but i love this book and i think it's good so i'm keeping it this one i wasn't sure about at first um this is mr darcy takes a wife and it's by Linda Burdell, and she just, she took Pride and Prejudice and she extended it because she was like, I've always wanted to know what happened after, as the, the first few chapters are a little bit weird. Um, the rest of it's really good, and it's, I just, I didn't like the ending. I thought it was just kind of strange what they did to Mr. Darcy at the end. And I'm assuming, I think there's a second one um, after this book. But I think I'm going to get rid of it because I don't see myself reading it again. It was kind of like I had to force myself to read and read and read and read. There were some parts I really liked and some parts I was just like, eh, not too keen on it. So I'm going to get rid of it. I think that's it. So yeah, those are my um, March favorites. Uh, it was very book heavy this month because I was really into reading. Um, but yeah, so I hope you liked the video. 
Um, please subscribe if you haven't already. I'll catch you in my next one. Um, yeah. Bye!